aged care providers on notice. The Prime Minister announcing a Royal Commission. Two people dead and three fighting for life after an infamous music festival. It wreaked havoc in the Philippines. Where is the year's most powerful storm headed now? And the Rabbitohs' week to forget ends with a performance to remember. This is NBN News with Jane Goldsmith. Good evening. With one facility being shut down every day, vile acts of abuse caught on camera and horrific stories playing out in the media and behind closed doors, the Prime Minister has decided to finally take action. Scott Morrison today announced there will be a Royal Commission into the aged care sector. It is covertly captured scenes such as this that has garnered a sense of suspicion and revulsion in the way aged care is managed in Australia. Every Australian will be shocked uh, when they find out the level of abuse and mistreatment that's occurring in these facilities. And after months of rebutting the need for the Royal Commission into aged care, the government today announced it would be doing so. How far and wide does it go? Does it touch on the whole sector? Now, until we can have clear answers to those questions, I think Australians will be unsure. According to the government's own data, in the last financial year, there has been a 177% jump in aged care homes where residents were identified as being at serious risk. In the same period, there was close to a 300% jump in the number of facilities in breach of aged care regulations. One service has been shut down by the Department of Health every day. But while supporting the commission, opposition leader Bill Shorten sheeted home the blame for the industry's condition on the Prime Minister in his previous portfolio. We know now already that the government cut the dementia supplement. That was a payment made to nursing homes for people who were diagnosed living with dementia. And how aged care is properly financed as well as executed remain the big questions for the industry and pensioner groups. Both government and users of the system will need to pay more into the future. But the speed of today's announcement appears to have caught some on the hop. We talked to the government all along, uh, but uh, we didn't know they were definitely doing this till last night. And the government is still facing questions on why it is now calling for the Royal Commission when it had spent much of this year denying it was necessary. I would rather spend the money on frontline services for aged care than a Royal Commission at that point. For Darren Paget, his uncle Lionel would go for days without his colostomy bag being changed before his death in June, his aged care facility failing all but one of 44 industry standards after a nine news investigation, why the training is needed. The training should be done before, a lot more done before they actually get into the job. And for Stuart Johnston, a realisation that we will all face this decision. You stand into a profit industry uh, and when you deal with profit, people come last. Mike Dalton, NBN News. It's the hardcore music festival with a deadly reputation. Now, a young man and woman have lost their lives taking drugs at DEF CON. Three others are in a critical condition, and the New South Wales Premier has had enough, vowing the event will never take place again. There's no doubting this was an epic party. But was it really all worth it? It was a very chaotic scene. It was quite a horrendous scene. Two people are dead, a 23-year-old man and a 21-year-old woman. And three people, including a woman aged 26 and a man just 19, are all in hospital fighting for life. All are believed to have taken illegal drugs. There's five families to date um, that their lives have potentially changed forever because of a poor decision made to take illegal drugs. 30,000 partygoers attended DEF CON, a music festival in Penrith yesterday. A staggering 700 needed medical help. And it was a busy night for the 180 uniformed and plainclothed police, arresting 69 people in possession of drugs and charging 10 with supply offences. Lots of people, good for a few people passed out, but you know, that's a sign of a good party. Partygoers may like it, but the Premier has had a gutful. This is an unsafe event, and I'll be doing everything I can to make sure it never happens again. This morning, three men from Bankstown, Mount Richard, and 
Murphy appeared in Parramatta Court. Two were refused bail. Their friends left court without them. Done the criminal. The 33-year-old Vodang Fan was released from custody. What were you planning on doing with those drugs, sir? DEFCON today issued a statement. We are disappointed at the number of reported drug-related incidents. We have a zero-tolerance policy in relation to drug use at the festival. Festival organisers are working closely and cooperating with the authorities. The controversial festival has had a bad track record with drugs since it began in 2009. Within the first four years, a young man had overdosed and died. Two years later, another man was also killed by drugs. With the death toll now doubled, some are saying enough is enough. It's certainly devastating um, and these lives were senseless young deaths uh, which affected everyone involved. I never want to see this event held in Sydney or New South Wales ever again. Gabrielle Boyle, NBN News. The super typhoon which caused widespread devastation and killed at least 28 people in the Philippines is right now slamming into Hong Kong. Millions of people are taking shelter as the system tracks west towards mainland China. Hong Kong is getting lashed by Typhoon Mankut. Sea defences are being breached. Gusts of up to 190 kilometres per hour are blasting the coast. The windows of one high-rise office building were blown out. Apartments also bore the brunt. The gambling enclave of Macau has been closed down. A crane on a building site there spearing into the ground. In Hong Kong, a young boy took his chances, forcing his father to mount a sliding rescue. A group of Gold Coast schoolgirls are now stranded in their hotel, along with thousands of tourists. The airport is now closed. Flights have been cancelled. The Philippine mountain resort town of Baguio, founded by winds then wiped away by wild torrents. Flash floods and landslides are sweeping away homes. It's how most have died. And the reason why an estimated 87,000 people were evacuated to safer ground. Further downstream, a man became caught as he attempted to cross floodwaters. The pictures don't show it, but somehow he was later rescued. On the outskirts of Manila, on the tail of a typhoon. Venturing out was dangerous. A man untangles his taxi bike from power lines. It was so strong, it qualified as a super typhoon, the most powerful storm on the planet this year. It lashed wide areas of the main island of Luzon, home to 50 million people. At its peak, the typhoon's winds hit 300 kilometers per hour, stronger than those of Hurricane Florence, which pummeled the Carolinas. The death toll is expected to climb as rescue teams reach remote communities. Mark Burroughs, NBN News.